problem 8.1, just walking through the WinBugs part of this. First, go to File, and go to New. This opens up a new um, document file for WinBugs that we're going to type our program into, type our code into. Now, for this particular model, we have got a likelihood function that's a binomial. Uh, this is for computer exercise 8.1. Yes, for computer exercise 8.1. And then um, the prior is, is a beta 1.1. One, one. First, we're going to type the word model and then do a left brace. <clears throat> Then on the next line, we're going to, now you don't have to tab, but I'm going to tab. And I like to do the likelihood function first. So I'm going to say y tilde dbin for binomial. And then I'm going to say pi comma 15. That means uh, probability is pi and you have 15 <clears throat> items in the sample. Then the next line, I'm going to put the prior. And so our prior pi will say tilde, again, and we're going to say d beta for a beta function, comma, 1, comma, 1, which means we have a 1, 1 beta function, which is functionally the same thing as a uniform prior. Then when we're done entering that, I'm going to close the brace on the next line. So that is the model that we wish to run. Now the one thing we have not put anywhere yet is using the fact that we have Six successes out of 15. Okay? So, it, because it said, suppose we observe six successes. Well, we're going to use a second line, and we're going to say list with a parenthesis. And this is what you want to do when you are entering data values. And we're going to say y equal six corresponding to <coughs> the six. Um, successes we had. Okay? Having done that, we're now ready to try to run the model. So, first go to Model in the menu and click Specification. We will see a window check model. Now, highlight, go to your file, and highlight model as so. Now click check model. You should see in the bottom left corner model is syntactically correct down in that bottom left corner. If you see that then there is happiness. Then you want to load the data. To load the data, now we're going to go to that list information. So go to list, highlight list with the left parenthesis and click load data. You should get data loaded. Next, you want to compile the program. Now we're only doing with one chain. Later on we'll talk about multiple chains to check the convergence, but for now we're just going to click compile. And it says model compile. <clears throat> Next, it's we need to generate initial values for pi, and often the easiest thing to do will be to do gen Inets, just generate initials. And it says initial values generated, model initialized. Okay? Next, 
We want to set ourselves up to be able to get individual values for pi, and also we want to set up to get summary data. So we're going to go to inf go back and click inference. Okay, click inference, and we want to get an inference. I'm trying to find the one I want. Um, no, give me a second. I've got to find. There's something I want to find. And I've got to find. Oh, options. Excuse me. First, go to options. Output options. And I would recommend clicking log. Change window to log. That way, um, everything is going to show up in one long window. Next, I want to go inference. And I'm going to go inference samples. Okay. And I want to type in the one value I'm wanting, which is pi. So I'm going to do pi, type pi, and I'm going to click set. Now, if there is more than one value that you want to obtain information for, then you would list each variable, and after each variable, you would click set. Follow. Hope we're okay so far. Finally, we're going to get values. So now we're going to go to update, model update. Now at this point we want to see, okay, how many values do we want to get? This gives us 1,000 iterations. We would actually, if we want to do more, we can do more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that 1,000 to a 5,000. <coughs> Now, refresh, thin, and so forth, we're not going to need to worry about that for this very simple example. Now, you're going to click Update. Okay. Having done that, we're now going to get results. Go back up to the menu and go to Inference and go to samples. Okay? Now, if you click on the down, drop down arrow, you will see pi. And then you're going to see a whole bunch of things. So let's look at some of these. First, let's look at history. What you see for history is that you see nice, thick, not, it's, 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 think of it as a yard with a whole lot of grass in it. Not one thin line, but a whole bunch of that. That's a good thing. That's what we want. To get a picture of the density, the probability distribution for pi, click density. And what we see is that our posterior distribution has some bell to it. Now, if I want to click stats, if I click stats, I get lots of things. I get my um, mean. <clears throat> I get my standard deviation. I get a 95% confidence interval. And you note that here they used all 5,000 iterations. So, so therefore, it came up with the value of pi being 0.41. Our MC Monte Carlo error is 0.001. That's a very low Monte Carlo error that we want. The last thing I want to talk about is CODA you will see two windows come up for CODA. One says CODA index, but the other one says CODA for chain 1. If you happen to want 
the individual values. This is the file you would save. And I would tend to recommend, if you're going to save this, I would do a file, save as, and I would say, uh, problem, I'm going to save as problem 8 underscore 1 data, or results, and save it as a TXT file, plain text file, and save it to where you want to save it to. But save it as a plain text file. Because what that is going to do, it will give you a tab delimited file which you can bring into SAS or other software to do pretty things that you want to do with Prop G, Plot, etc. Now go back to that window that we had, the untitled window. If I want to save that window, I go File, Save As, and I'm going to call that one Problem 8 underscore 1 Code. And I save it. And it gives me something that I can basically only open in WinBooks. Oh, so we should save it as an ODC? Uh, yeah, ODC. Yeah, WinBucks likes ODC files. All right. That is how you do <clears throat> problem 8.1. Now, if you have something, let's go back down to 8.4. Because, um, actually, um, not so much 8.4. If you turn to page... 147, 148. There was the example 14 on page 147, 148. Okay? And what you had there, this will give you an example of some pre of already written code. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go to, um, and I'm going to get the, well, I thought I was going to get it, but maybe I don't. I thought I had it. Oh dear. Ah, well. Okay, they're text files, but we'll see how this works. Open up the Anna file. No? Oh, I didn't save the code. Don't tell me I didn't save the code on this. Or it may be in another place. Um, it may be in another another place, but just might not be on this computer. Um, oh, well. Uh, 